Welcome to the second hour of this morning. Here are today's headlines. Sungdaemun, or the Namdaemun Gate, will no longer be called the first national treasure of Korea as the Cultural Heritage Administration decides to stop the numbering of its cultural treasures. This decision is part of the four strategies and 15 tasks of the 2021 plans under the vision of fostering and cherishing cultural heritage with the people to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the CHA. The Guardian of Cultural Assets hopes the removal of the numbering system will help clear any misunderstanding that the numbers reveal an order of significance of the country's cultural legacy. Google has advised, the government has advised Google to strengthen user protection and ensure service stability in regards to an hour-long service outage that occurred globally in December last year. In addition, should a similar incident occur again, Google Korea is to notify users in Korean of the fact via local media outlets and its own social media. This marks the first case where the so-called Netflix Act has been applied. But since the law mandates damage compensation for incidents that last four hours or more, there will be no direct customer compensation this time. Finally, the National Human Rights Commission of Korea has ruled that it violates students' human rights to make them clean offices used by the teaching staff. The principal of the school, where a complaint was filed, as well as the local education office, explained that cleaning helps students learn to be considerate and communicate with others. But the Human Rights Watchdog said that forcing students to clean teachers' offices restricts their rights and therefore is not educational, and advised that cleaning rooms not used by students themselves should be a voluntary act and be counted as community service. And you can listen to these headlines once again by searching TBS EFM. Once there, you'll get a script of the headlines and subtitles as well. Coming up next, a closer look into the phone call between U.S. President Joe Biden and South Korean President Moon Jae-in, followed by an analysis on the U.K.'s COVID-19 support measures.